Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Q at HP Discover 2014. Brought to you by HP. Hey, welcome back everyone. Here live in Las Vegas for HP Discover. I'm John Furrier, this is theCUBE. My co-host Dave Vellante with wikibon.org, uh, live in Las Vegas HP Discover for 2014. Our next guest is CUBE alumni, Sargulai, the uh, Senior Vice President, General Man uh, Chief Operating Officer of the HP Cloud, Senior Vice President, Chief Operating Officer. Welcome back. Great to be here as always. So the team gets bigger, the cloud gets bigger. Just take a tweet of uh, Bobby Patrick holding his hands out here. He's like, I caught the fish, it was this big. Um, <laughs> It's been great to follow your career. You built this from scratch. Uh, operationally, it's got a great foundation. Now you're starting to put the walls up, hang the iron, so to speak, and uh, start to shape this thing out. So give us the update on the operations of H HP and the variety of the different cloud. What's it starting to look like? The foundation set, I said like a hanging iron, to use that metaphor. What's it shaping up to be? Well, you know, like I said, you know, we talked about this two years ago and we started building it. All right, we were only a few people, but we had a vision. And uh, you know, we now have hundreds of people working on it. With the launch of Hillian, obviously we now have our distro out. We have cloud system with our technology as well. We have our public cloud. We're pushing it into managed cloud as well. And obviously it was the Hillian network that we just announced. So you know, it's all coming together. Uh, I think that the beautiful part of it is this is really what we, were, what we had envisioned a few years ago. And, but you, know, you can only do this if you have commitment and you have funding. And you know, luckily we were lucky enough to get funding from Bill and Meg and Martin to actually make it happen. And I think that's the amazing piece that HP is really investing in making this go. You guys had a great presence out in OpenStack Summit. It was impressive to see from a, from a not just the normal OpenStack press, just from a talent standpoint, the team's getting bigger. Um, so before we get into some of the whole you know, operational pieces about the team and the different versions, talk about you know, what the different pieces of what's working today. You have a lot of different things announced. You have stuff that's in GA software. You have the big announcement today about HP's cloud, Helium Cloud for the service providers and enterprise. Break it down, break out the, the offerings. This is a lot of different use cases, some shipping, some's coming in Q4. Break that down for us. Sure. So, you know, we have, uh, first of all, you know, we have, and the Helium really is a portfolio of products. And there's different pieces of that portfolio. You know, first of all, we have, you know, cloud system. So this is our market leading, you know, uh, system for building private clouds. And you know, that is an unbelievable product line. It's like, it's like on a rocket ship. And that also has our OpenStack in it as well. Then we have the distro we announced, which is the Helium Community Edition. And that's really for people to play with. You can download it for free. It's like a sandbox to get a feel for what we have. And then you know, that's going to be go GA uh, later this year, around August. And then we're going to when, when we're going to have what's called you know our Helium Commercial Edition or HP Helium OpenStack, and that's really going to be the enterprise grade, high scale, heavily integrated for people who really want to build large scale clouds. We also announced uh, this week actually our developer platform. And the commercial is that available now, or is that going to come? No, that will be the, the commercial edition is going to be available uh, in general availability is probably around August sometime. Yeah, same, or same thing. And that's actually not come, got, it's, I think it's not actually called commercial edition, but it's actually the just Helion OpenStack. The current one's a preview, community edition. This one is sort of just the, the plain version. But that is the version that okay. uh, for customers to build clouds with. Okay, so, so now, wait, so Helion and Helion OpenStack. Helion's the umbrella brand? Helion um, is the umbrella portfolio. Okay. So Helion is the cloud portfolio from HP, and like I said, that has cloud system in it. It's got some of our management suite in it. It's got our distros in it, which is like the community edition and the OpenStack. And it also now have a dev platform, uh, which is based on Cloud Foundry, which we launched uh, here in Discover as well. Okay, so let me just get this. Cloud systems, distro and Helion, community edition, commercial edition, Helion for OpenStack for large scale GA this summer. What's next? We, then have then? The we have the developer platform, which we launched, the community edition of that here. And the commercial edition will be later this year as well, which is our development platform for Cloud Foundry optimized for OpenStack. And, and, then, and then Helion, Helion OpenStack is your, your OpenStack distribution, which correct. I got to ask you about Red Hat, which is not Oops. certified on Red Hat, right? I don't know if you guys talked about this at OpenStack, but what's, what's the story? You guys obviously would welcome Red Hat certifying, right? right? Look, we, we, we have, a, our, by the way, just before that, I just want to say one more thing. We also have our Helion Public Cloud, which is the public cloud we've oh, had okay. running OpenStack 
um, you know, since 2010. Which completes the portfolio. Yeah, right. Sorry. Portfolio. Okay. Back to the Red Hat question. Look, our, our view is um, we shouldn't have this artificial connection between Linux and OpenStack. And you know, that's one of the things that we've noticed as we've talked to customers where you know, some of the Linux vendors, you've named a few, there's others, have tried to create this artificial thing where if you're using OpenStack, you have to use this version of Linux and therefore potentially you have to end up paying all kinds of licensing fees. We don't think that's really what people had in mind when they came out with OpenStack, right? OpenStack's supposed to be open. And so that's one of the reasons where, you know, when we put out our Helia and OpenStack, uh, you know, we, we, it actually comes in with a host Linux built into it, based on Debian, but we've optimized. And oh, by the way, we'd be happy to, to get that into OpenStack for everybody. That's not specific to HP. Uh, and so that's our view. We don't think that, you know, whatever is happening in the Linux world should be telling people, informing people what to do in OpenStack. That's the first piece. The other question, of course, is okay, so, if you're, what, what do you use as your guest operating system? And you know, our belief is you, know, you should be free to use whatever guest you want. There are certain vendors who believe that their guests should only work with their host. I think that's somewhat monopolistic and I think customers have figured that out. So you know, if I use a certain host as OpenStack, why should I be restricted what guests I use? Right? That's not the purpose. And so I think, you know, I think the good news is there's a lot of the discussion about that in the ecosystem and it, these things usually solve themselves. Because so, I, I don't want to, I'm not trying to stir the pot, I don't want to well, really rat hole this, but I, just for my own edification, you can run Red Hat's distribution uh, on your OpenStack platform, they just Red won't Hat's certify Linux. it. That's right. Uh, right? They yes. just won't certify That's it. Right. Now, you want them to certify, you'd like it, you'd help them certify they, it. Yeah, they, they, they've certified it on VMware and they've certified it on Windows. Right. Uh, you know, for whatever reason, they don't want to certify it on someone else's OpenStack. I think the question remains with them why they would discriminate against OpenStack specifically. I thought they were big supporters of OpenStack. But you know, everybody's got to make their commercial I, edition. I, I would think they, that to the, when you reach critical mass, that they would certify it on, on your platform. Why wouldn't they? It's good business. I, I mean, I, unless it's, I, unless it's I, what, as you say, I think I think, factor. you know, again, the way these things usually work out, especially in open source, is you know, let the customers decide with their feet. And ultimately they will. And right. you know, I think what we've told customers is, you know, hey, look, you, you have an ELA with uh, Red Hat, you run what you want to run, and let them tell you that you can't run it. And if the customer's big enough, that usually works out pretty well. It reminds well. me of, of Oracle on VMware. <clears throat> Same kind of FUD, everybody just said, damn the torpedoes, and, and it all worked out fine. Yeah. I don't think there's any problem uh, in this area. Talk about OpenStack for a second. Let's talk about HP. So you guys had a big presence there. Um, what's going on there? A lot of buzz around you guys now. Now that you have more feet on the street, uh, Bobby Patrick was just on, now you got a marketing guy, and you guys are going to turn up a lot of action. Uh, what's the status? We had Eileen, we had Monty on OpenStack. How many people do you have? What's the influence? Well, what are you guys doing in the lead the OpenStack? Last year you said something big's going to happen this year in OpenStack. Tell us what happened. Come on, man, what's going well, on? Well, you know, everybody kept on saying, where's your distro? So we have a distro. Now, the reason we launched a distro when we did is because we felt that it was, OpenStack was ready. Um, back to what you said, you know, the, as you know, having followed open source, the key to open source is the community. And the part that I think has been most important is our, and it's, regardless of all these announcements and products we've shipped, which are amazing, the part that I'm most proud of is that we've actually dramatically increased our presence in the community. You know, we have seven PTLs, right? Seven team leads that are voted by, you know, based on merits in OpenStack. That's a huge deal. And the reason that's useful for us is also because it helps us drive enterprise grade into OpenStack. And so really, I think the key thing, and also if you look in Juno today, right, we are number one code contributor in Juno right now. Now that could change, we'll be number one or two, that's not our focus, but, you know, so when we talk about being serious about OpenStack, you know, we're putting our money where our mouth is. So yeah, it's substantial, I mean, that number one, number two is irrelevant. It's not, is it meaningful, is your contribution meaningful? Well, that's we have product really leads, some of the product leads. How many product leads do you guys have? Because how many, it's like 15, 16 seats, or what's the, the, the breakdown of the project leads who lead the projects? Because that's the, the leading indicator. Well, like I said, we have seven, all right, I don't remember each one of them, but you know, we got triple O. Out of how many? I think there's 14. So, so we have about 15? half, close to half. As project leads. As PTLs. Okay, so I got to answer the next question <laughs> as I smile and kind of think about how I want to say this. What's broken about OpenStack that you guys want to fix? So you got leadership there at a technical level. Um, what is the urgent areas? You got the, the there's some, some rooms in OpenStack that are on fire that need to be that need to be put out or rearranged, however you want to say it. Obviously there's a lot of demand for OpenStack, no doubt about it. What, what leadership are you guys bringing and what do you see need to be I done? Think, I think, look, OpenStack is evolving and I think one of the, the things that has been very uh, informative to us is the fact that we're running a public cloud, and so we've run into a lot of these things way up front. Uh, it's one of the re you know when we ran on a public cloud ever since Grizzly, and you know, look, I don't think 
I've already been, on, you know, been quoted on this. You know, networking needs work. It's not that it's broken per se, but it's not where it needs to be. And I, the good news is everybody recognizes it, and we're doing some work there. You know, install with triple O is getting better, but there's work to be done. Monitoring work to be done, and so I don't think that something's broken per se. I just think you know, OpenStack is evolving, and we, we shouldn't get ahead of our skis. But you know, today you can deploy it, but we would like it to be uh, more seamless. Less involvement, cloud's all about automation. Uh, you know, OpenStack still requires more involvement than we would like. One of the reasons, one of the things that we've done as part of our launches this year is actually we've, we're building out a professional services team. We already have a very large team there and we end up hundreds of professional services because customers have asked us, along with our distro, they also want us to help them actually deploy this. So we're building that out as well. But you know, I don't think things are broken per se, but you know, there's definitely opportunity to continue improving the product. What about and that services is part of your team? Sorry, John. Yes, right. Yes. It's, it's, they're it's integrated specifically into your put under the cloud business unit. Actually, work for me, but that's not that important. They're part of the cloud organization because, in the spirit of DevOps, everything has to be tied together. They have to be next to the developers. They can't be off somewhere in the woods. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what are you most proud of this in the past 12 months? Obviously, last year we had a great conversation. You were very bold. You're like, hey, you know, we're going to do some big things. I think, or it might have been Barcelona, but I can't remember. But it seems like we're always seven, doing big things. Sounds like dog years. <laughs> but now, what are you most proud of this year? If you look back, I um, think you know we managed to execute to what our plan was. You know, our plan was to join our public cloud, get a distro out. Our plan was to significantly hire talent, you know, we've become the destination for talent, people who want to work on open source and have a free hand on OpenStack, we are destination. You know, we're getting tremendous hires, tremendous talent, we brought in talent in like Bill Hill, you know, great guys like Bobby, we got in Kerry, so we, we, we upped the talent level, you know, and so I think we've become a destination for people who really want to push cloud forward, and it's been able to grow the team. And so I think that's probably what I'm most proud of, that we really are driving from that perspective. Sorry, I wonder if I could ask you, I've been asking this question and I really don't feel like I've gotten a straight answer and I almost always get straight answers straight from answers. you, so. Um, <laughs> this experience between on-premise and, and the public cloud. Yes. How consistent is that today and what's the vision as to how consistent it will be and when? Well, I mean, I, I mean what do you, we, in terms of seamlessness or what well, do you Well, so mean? You, you address seamlessness with a, I'm specifically thinking about things like security policy and auditability and the consistency of that compliance between my on-premise and my hybrid. That's a complaint that I hear all the time from people. It's just too hard. I negotiate with a vendor for six months. I'm comfortable with that. And then I turn to the public cloud and it's a completely new process and it's just it's frustrating. Well, that's part of the reason that we're driving this hybrid architecture, right? It's not 100% there yet, but when we talk about having the Helium OpenStack, the idea would be that you would have the same on-prem and the same off-prem. What we also discuss in the Helium network is to create this federation mm -hmm. that, all, that all uses the same architecture and has the same baselines, because the key is to have the same baselines. So I'm worried that outside that network, I won't have interoperability across OpenStack. Should, should I not be worried? You, well, look, inter you should always be I wouldn't be say worried, but you should always be open. You, know, you should always look at the details. The devil's in the details. Everything is perfect until you get into the details. But you know, I think as OpenStack matures, and in this first in this network, you will be provided that. You know, depending how how much closer you're to the network, the more it will be seamless. If you get further afield, it may not be as seamless, but it's still going to be a lot more seamless being OpenStack than going to a completely different architecture. But you know, the, the beauty of this network is you know, it's a very inclusive network ecosystem. It's going to have major service providers across all the globe, and so the chance of being out of that network is going to be very, very minimal. You'll be able to get all your services from that network if you so want, wish. Right. So it's clear, obviously, Amazon and Google have uh, put the, the fear of God into many folks. What's your take on them relative, relative to the business opportunity? Obviously, right now, it's not truly uh, overlapping or conflicting, other than a, maybe a potential collision course uh, together in the enterprise and those look, guys. Look, I give these guys a lot of credit for driving this architecture. You know, they did it from within. They built the stuff, the DevOps, the cloud, a lot of the things that are being driven, they, they, they started. But you know, between that and mission critical enterprise grade, there's a long way. We're at the beginning of cloud, and so they've, they've started a great thing. But you know, I think that while on the technology front they have some really great technologies, when you get into enterprise grade and mission critical and the kind of things that enterprises expect, you know, there's a question of do they actually have that DNA? And uh, you know, I think that's where you know, we have a big advantage. Can we talk about pricing a little bit? Because you guys announced a much simplified pricing model. I mean, uh, Amazon pricing is very complicated. Uh, and, it, and it changes you know, every 30 seconds, which is I guess a good thing for consumers maybe, but your pricing, $1,400 per server, yeah. right? 
Uh, how, describe what that means. Well, it basically means if you want to run a private cloud or you want a public but a private cloud, and again, it depends on the size you want. If you want larger and you want to make a bigger commitment, it's going to have to be cheaper. Yep. Right, for $1,400 a year, you get our full supported stack, full indemnification, everything, including the host Linux. From All the HP. services? All the services. I get Object Store, I get Cinder, I get... You get all the everything. services in OpenStack. So, you know, again, it, the enterprises, I mean, OpenStack is not about price. It's got to be competitive price, but it's about simplicity. And so let's not complicate it, right? You know, some of the other mm -hmm. vendors will give you very complicated pricing. When you actually add all the support and everything, then it all of a sudden becomes kind of problematic. Uh, and we're also looking at other ways to price things. Uh, we're going to be very creative in terms of pricing per use and so forth, even on-prem, because we want to make it easy for people really to, you know, to have the cloud experience regardless of what deployment model they're doing, whether it's on-prem or off-prem. Well, but customers can turn around and monetize that, particularly cloud service providers or internal customers can, can charge for that. That's a nice model. That's Absolutely. a simple model for them to consume, <laughs> and then they can build out their services catalog however they want to do it. Simplicity is important. Dave and I always talk about sports metaphors, like whether you're talking about Formula One racing or cars. From back we, of the innings. We, we, look, we look at you as like a mechanic in the shop. You had some parts, you put some cloud together, now you have more parts coming in, the shop's getting bigger. Um, so I want to ask you two questions. One, what have you learned in playing with engines, getting rebuilding them, taking them apart, pitching them together? And two, what's your plan for the year? So first, um, with what you've done, which has been pretty much from the ground up, getting your hands dirty with, with the public cloud, to now, what have you learned? What scar tissue how can you share with the folks as kind of a best practice, what to look for, uh, where, the, where the potential speed bumps are in terms of dealing with uh, public cloud and hybrid cloud, and then what your plan is going forward this year? Well, we've learned a lot of things. Um, you know, we've learned that networking doesn't work. I mean, we've learned, <laughs> although we fixed that. I think it's going to be important to really understand what are the key, you know, when we started off OpenStack, us and the community, there were many different projects and lots of different things, and there's a lot of benefit to having all these interrelated projects because they move really fast. But at the end of the day, the, of the, day the, right, the customers are consuming a system, and so we need to look at this more of a system and less of its projects because from a customer's perspective, it's a system. And part of the challenge, you asked me what's the challenge in OpenStack, it needs to look like a system. You know, the monitoring, the networking, all of that needs to look like one system. So I think you'll be seeing us do a lot of work in that area because that's the way the customer wants to consume that. And so while the way that OpenStack is distributed everywhere has enabled us to get great speed of innovation, at the end of the day, it all has to come together as a system, and I think we, the community, have some work to do so there. So it's not so much a flaw, it's more of a continuum of evolution, right? There's an evolutionary process where there's some holes right now. That, well, you run really fast, and then you got all these different things, and you say, you know, it'd be really nice if they all sort of work together better, yeah. and so you, so, okay, now we're at that stage, the maturity stage, you've gone from the adolescence to teenager, yeah. and we need to go to college, and you know, you got to, you know, you go to college, you got to be more, a bit more polished. So follow up on that, so um, where are the white spaces in that, that are opportunities for other entrepreneurs and companies? Uh, and two, um, where do you see specifically um, the paradigm looking like something else? Meaning, you know, is it systems management? What, what does this look like from a, from a legacy standpoint? Where have we seen this movie before? Systems management, uh, is it um, networking management? Well, I think, I think when you went to client server for mainframes, Right, it's something like that in the sense where every the whole way you look at things is different. I mean, the DevOps concept, right, is very different for people to understand when they start. You know, when you go to someone, and you say, "Listen, your enterprise app is going to upgrade every few weeks." How does that make you feel? Uncomfortable. <laughs> 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 Unless you're you know, a DevOps. You go shop. and you talk to people about OpenStack, and they say, "Look, I want six years support." I'm not like, "Really?" In six years, you know, whatever you're using is going to be, you know, is going to be obsolescence. Dog years, that's that heavy know, year. And, and so I think that is really, you know, changing, you know, so the concept, it's the same when we went to PCs, you know, and, you know, mainframes would upgrade once a decade, and all of a sudden, every six months, you get a new PC, uh, you know, a new Intel chip, you know, because of Moore's Law, it changed the way people look at things. The same thing is here, where your cycle of innovation, it, you know, keeps on increasing. The speed of, of, of change increases, and, you know, if you look at, the thing what I find interesting, you know, if you look at evolution, right, What's sort of determined who has been successful and has really been who can, who can uh, you know, handle change the best. Not who's smartest, not who's biggest, who can handle change the best. And you know, business is like that and cloud is now like that too. And so it's accelerating. So if before handling change meant you could do you know, three or four upgrades a year, you thought you were a hero. Now these guys are coming and say, yeah, I can do it every week. So what happens to those 19 year old enterprise apps? They just well, I think that, that, that's a good point. Look, it's like, you know, we still have mainframes, right? And so apps that are very dynamic, or things where there's a lot of change, a yeah, lot yeah. of shift, are going to have to get rewritten. 
So it's a balance, really. right? And apps that are sort of static and they're just like, you know, some records thing, whatever, they'll just stay and there'll be an API to call them. And they'll just, you know, you'll put them in a box and, you know, you leave them in that box because, you know, you want to be, you want to, you only, you only want to rewrite stuff or write new stuff where you think you get a benefit. Some things, again, there we still have mainframes for certain things because there's no value in rewriting them. But, you know, the thing that, but, the, but they'll be in a box. They're not going to be part of your new experience because your new experience, people's expectations are just very different. They're expecting, if I want a new feature, okay, can I get it next week? Right? It's not like, okay, yeah, I'll put it in, and three years from now, some feature will show up. You know? So how do you whip those old guys and, and, the new, and train the new, how do you whip the new old guys in the shape and train the new blood coming in to be DevOps? Because what you're really talking about is, that's the Mark Zuckerberg, that's the, that's the kind of culture where move fast, break stuff, but in the enterprise, you can't move fast, you have to move fast, you have to move fast and keep it supported. Which well, is now Facebook's model I try model to avoid now. whipping people in general, but. <laughs> <laughs> we're tolerant, we're, 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 we're inclusive. We should talk to some of my engineering VPs about that. We'll have Bullying is not cool anymore. More. Yeah, uh, but you know, I, I think you raise a more a more important point, which is it is there's so much culture in moving to cloud. There's and people on this you know forget about how important culture is. But right? a lot of companies ask me, so what do I need to think about? I said the first thing you need to think about is culture, okay? Because if your people can't get the culture, if you can't get the culture across, then it doesn't matter what technology you're going to put in, it's not going to work. It reminds me, you know, many many years ago, I'm dating myself now. You know, we were moving from Fortran to C and I had a bunch of engineers who wrote a C program that looked like Fortran, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had go-tos, I had everything, right? There was no indentation, everything. It's like, okay, well this is C. The code is C, but it's Fortran. And so you can do the same thing with cloud, and so if you're not careful, you'll end up with that. Yeah. Uh, it, could be new, it could be COBOL. Yeah. <laughs> it could yeah. be worse. And, uh, well, I'm not sure it's worse, but we'll, <laughs> I have stories about that too. But, um, so the question, you know, the new guys is not a problem because they've come in with that mindset. They've, you know, they were born cloud first. Um, you know, and the old folks, or the folks who've been doing this longer, there are those who can cross the river and those who can't, right? And then they have to embrace. If they don't want to embrace it, you can't force them to embrace it. But there are a lot of people who really like change and they think it's great and they love it and they're like into it. And there are people who say, look, I don't want to deal with this. And you know, it's okay, there's going to be a lot. It's a long tail of legacy. They can continue working on the legacy stuff. So you really have to let people choose themselves if they want to do that or not. You can't force it upon people, but there are a lot of people who've been doing IT for a long time who think it's the greatest thing. Sorry, we gotta, we're getting close on time here, so I want to thank you for coming on, I really appreciate it. So I wanted to you gave me the last word. Share with the folks out there the plan for next year. What's your goals, what are you looking to do? I know you can't talk about some of the things you're working on because you're on some top secret projects, um, but uh, uh, what's going on? What's, what's, uh, what's double, on your agenda? Double secret probation. Yeah. The, <laughs> <laughs> look. It'll be on Silicon Valley HBO, don't worry yeah, about it. I'm, I'm going to be involved in helping write this year. House, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> look. Like I told you last year, right, we are, whenever you're trying to understand what someone is doing, you have to look at not what they're saying, but what are they investing? What are they moving? Because that tells you, right, where the money is being put, where the executives, the senior executives are focused, that's where the action is going to be. And you know, you, you can see that we're investing very heavily in cloud, so you should assume we're going to accelerate that. Uh, you know, we believe we have tremendous opportunity. We already have a great start with OpenStack and cloud system. And so I think you, what you'll see is, both deeper and broader. Uh, but Can you be, be specific on some tactical goals, like uh, version, distro, upgrades? I would love, or? I would look, everybody in the OpenStack, I, I believe that next year at this time, we will have some very large customers running our distro. Big guys. I'm not talking about you know, small customers, love them, whatever, we'll have a lot of those, we have those yet, but we will have some big guys you know, doing big things with the distro. And I think we will have some additions to the distro that will surprise people in terms of how it's helping enterprise on its journey. All right, Sarkar Lai, Senior Vice President, Chief Operating Officer of HP Cloud, always great to see you and get the insight uh, on the trend, in the trenches, making things happen, running the operations here. This is theCUBE, extracting the signal from the noise. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.